Welcome to How to Rock the Stage Show, a show committed to equipping you to hone your media skills better to stand out from the crowd as a go-to expert in your field. Each week, Rich Montreger interviews top leaders, influencers, authors, speakers, podcasters, and media professionals about how to leverage media best to help you shine brighter on camera and stage as a go-to expert. Now, here's your host, The Trigger, Rich Von Trigger. Welcome back to How to Rock the Stage Live, streaming live once again, multiple channels. And it's great to be back after some live shows this summer, some break time. We, we all need break times. But unlike Hollywood, we are back underway and we are celebrating this, our fourth season. This kicks off season number four, year number four, of How to Rock the Stage. And it's great to be back with you again live. Don't forget, if the conversation goes on tonight, drop in the chat, ask questions, give us some love, give us some emojis. But you can, you are a vital part of being on the show tonight. You, the live streaming audience, help make this all possible each and every week. Speaking about making it all possible, I am thrilled once again to be still working with Adavita Studios. Adavita Studios is powering how they rock the stage. Their, their experienced team, paired with their state-of-the-art remote recording process, brings your message to the market even faster. They'll work with you to produce your, uh, your audio books, your podcast series, and they'll help you distribute it widely throughout the media market. For more information about Adavita and learn more about what they do, go to adavita.com. Again, that's adavita.com. Dot com and they are great to work with. I was just on a call with them yesterday, getting caught up after the summer hiatus, and we're ready to rock and get going with this once again. So happy to have everybody along here. Tonight, we're going to get back into it. We're going to be talking about video. I love video. I love live streaming. I love video. I love video. Did you know I love video. Tonight, we're going to get into a little bit of YouTube, helping you learn better how to leverage it, how to market it, how to brand it, because your brand should be leveraging video. So we're going to have a great conversation tonight. Chris Chavez is going to be our guest here this uh, this evening. And let me tell you a little bit about Chris. YouTube is an ideal stage for you, for your uh, authentically to come through and express yourself, to showcase your personality, and through diverse content, which is what Chris deals with, it's both long-form, short-form video content. He has now had the opportunity to delve into these strategies that empower you to craft captivating videos, highlight who you are, what you do, and we're going to get deep into it with Chris as he is beaming in live from Nashville, correct? You're correct. That's right. Music <laughs> City. There is always something happening in Nashville. And besides music, there's a lot more video and TV and media content coming out there too, isn't it? That's correct. Yeah. I mean, this place is, it's growing every day. And so with that growth, you got to capture everything that's going on. So yeah, exactly. So for, first of all, what, what got you into the video, the media content aspect? Yeah. So actually my background started behind or in front of the camera. I was an actor. And so I went to school for theater and I, I just, I love, I just love performing. I love storytelling. And so the next logical step was to hop behind it. And so I started uh, learning how to create um, short, just short videos, like um, little short films, nothing really yeah. huge, just to learn, you know, hone in on the craft. And then I was, I, 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 I you know, this YouTube thing, you know, who knew it was going to take off, but this little YouTube thing happened. And uh, I was curious. I watched a lot of YouTube channels. I mean, that's where everyone gets their information from. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn YouTube and learn how to just market myself and how to do, you know, how to advertise with it. And I created this little fun movie YouTube episode or this YouTube channel that taught me the ropes, how to create a thumbnail, how to market it, all that fun stuff. And I haven't looked back since, and I've been just doing videography for a while now. So let's talk about shorts. Since you're talking about YouTube, I will fully confess, again, I was not a fan of shorts when they first came out. I thought it was a gimmick. I thought, no, we don't need this. It's just more... Stuff being refurbished, thrown out there, halfly, half baked, half cooked. But shorts have become a lead magnet to bigger content if it's used right. It's become a great tool. What do you think of shorts? Well, shorts, I thought the same thing when it first came out as well, to be honest. But when you think about the success of a video, when you're watching a full length, two minute, three minute, five minute long video, 
you realize you have six to eight seconds to hook someone in in the first few minutes of that of that video. From that point on, you know, engagement will it'll dip. It'll just depending on what you're doing. And so short form shorts are it's such a wonderful way to tease what's happening. So it's like you find a little sweet spot within that episode that's has like a question mark, and you're like, oh, what is I, w- I want to see what happened. I want to, you know, I want to watch the next video. And yeah. shorts are that beautiful driving force to bring people to your page to view the longer form content. So it's it's a wonderful thing. So first question coming in here, where do you find about the package on YouTube? Um, again, there's a newbie here. I, 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 I know Jan, but she's actually... How do, how do you kind of get in there? Where, where do you start? That's a great question because YouTube is the second largest mm-hmm. social en- uh, engine out there besides Google. It's owned by Google, but it's the number two, the Google. But once you learn how to you really leverage it, it's a game changer for you, isn't it? Oh, it definitely is. Like, it brings great visibility and awareness to you. But I think to start, um, the first question you have to ask yourself before you even hit record on anything, YouTube, anything is, would you watch that? So, you know, if it's something that that's not going to engage you, then you got to shift gears to figure out what's going to work. But think about the videos that you watch on YouTube. What, what do you resonate with? Think about it. If you're in the food industry and you watch someone preparing a meal, how do they shoot it? You know, how are they talking about it? Do they use music in the background? Just kind of pluck it out and kind of think about why do you like that video? And, and then, oh, sorry, go on. Yep. Yeah. And then the great thing after that is start just recording, just play. Don't even put it on YouTube. Don't put it anywhere. Don't even show anyone if you don't want to. Just play. It's the only way to really kind of understand the structure of a story, the structure of how to tell, you know, how to how to have a show going. Well, and then when you get into this more and more, you realize there is a lot more to get into. It really oh, yeah. becomes fun. It becomes very addictive, and. It's strange because like all those cat videos, people went crazy for cat videos. <laughs> and as silly as that sounds now, YouTube blew up with cat videos. So you don't have to be doing what we're doing, running the show, producing the show. You can go in a wide range of directions with your YouTube channels. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's some, I sometimes I equivalent YouTube to like going to college. You go to college with an idea that you want for a degree, but then you're like, you know what? Actually, I like this subject better so i'm going to try that subject you have to find your niche and it's it's yeah that's exactly what i put to his college so oh children's books okay she's publishing children's books that's awesome. so there is a way to leverage the video world to help the book world i do a lot of that what are your thoughts on that how, how do these two worlds come together now yeah i mean when you're promoting anything the biggest thing that you need to think about is your is you your personality it does you know, uh, you don't have to have these crazy cameras and, and, and lights and, and lavaliers. Have your personality to talk about the things that are you're passionate about. And in turn, people are going to gravitate towards that. So when you're publishing any book, a children's book, think about, you know, what part of that book's really exciting to you and, and where did you get your inf- influence from and, and read a couple of chapters from the book and get people really excited about it because children's book books are huge. So it's, it's a lovely thing to just, share with the world what you're working on and even the illustrations you could talk about the person that illustrated your book for you and highlight them and it'll get excited for your book because they knew their illust- that person's illustration from something else that they worked on it well, just I'm, and and jan's asking a great question for me that is a great place to start she's already written the material she knows the material now she's got to come on camera let the personality come alive and then you already mentioned a couple ways to jazz it up show the cover do a little video, do, uh, you know, kids play in the background. You know, there's so many simple ways to take the story and now bring the video story alive. And she's a star of her own video show. Yep. Yeah. And you can even talk about, uh, Jan, you can even talk about books that you loved growing up and why that, you know, that got you excited in writing your own children's book. There's a lot of really fun things you could do with that. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cool little niche to, to be in. Well, and that's where the search engine comes in. Again, the second largest search engine on the net. So people are looking for books, children's books. And if she hashtags, promotes it properly, does it, they will find her content because it's where they want to be. And that's part of the game of YouTube is you have to stand out and make it very clear what you're doing, right? Correct. Yeah. I mean, and that's that also goes to 
uh, thumbnails and, uh, you know, your titles and even hashtags of how you're kind of putting things together. Because it's exactly like you said, people are hunting for this stuff. They're yes. fishing for it. And when you, you know, you, you mark them correctly, they're going to hook and they're going to, they're going to find your content. Well, and again, there's almost every topic on there. How, how to fix your car, yeah. how to unplug your toilet, <laughs> how, how to teach your children Chinese or whatever. I mean, yeah, exactly. it's an endless array of information there now, but it really is learning how to catalog it. So yeah. they find you easier because there's so many people competing in the same topical area. Correct. Yeah, being unique, standing out, trying. I like to test out titles. So I'll do a title and then I'll let it go for maybe a whole day. And then the next day I'll look at it and be like, okay, I didn't get enough engagement for that. So let's play with the title. And then I'll do that with hashtags or even thumbnails. I'll let a thumbnail go for a day and just play with it and change it. You'll find what's resonating, but you have to experiment. There's, there's really no other way to go with YouTube except for experimenting on it. Well, and that's where the fun comes in because, yes, there are rules or best practices, but there really aren't. Correct. Yeah. I mean, there. I mean, I don't know if you remember, but there was a, a YouTube video years and years ago now. But you know, Johnny bit my finger. The little kid in the back of the, you know, it went viral. It went everywhere, and then everyone was spoofing their own Johnny bit my finger video. Yeah. It, it's really crazy how. You can just put something up there and sometimes you hit gold with it by experimenting. <laughs> and that's the weird thing about it is you'll do a video that you feel like it's great. It's awesome content. It is horrible. You do one that you're kind of iffy on and it blows up. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting experiment. So let's get into the branding because, again, entrepreneurs, leaders, CEOs, they're all trying to leverage video now, which is so important. Video access like never before. Mini TV studio right on your phone. But now you have to have the power of branding to stand out because there's so much noise out there. So what are some of your tips, pointers on the branding with the video? So I'm going to use my personal uh, company, uh, business for an example because the big thing that I lead on my brand is I love humor. I think humor is the most marketable thing ever. And so, I mean, look, look at um, Maximum Effort. That's Ryan Reynolds' uh, production company. Yeah. His brand is strictly humor. But the great thing about that is his humor works so well with what he's presenting that you're going to remember what he's selling. And so I try to lean on that with mine, with humor, and with just having fun with what you're doing. So <laughs> when I'm doing a video or if I'm doing a promo on something that I'm offering or a video that I'm, I want to push – I'll have fun with it. I'll do something really fun. If I make a mistake, I'll leave it in because it brings that personality and that relatability to your message. And it's people buy from people and they're your people will gravitate towards that. So yeah. I, what I kind of do lean in on your strengths and that those strengths usually are your biggest brand assets. Well, and you bring up a really good point. Some people are trying to edit out every um, every ah, every burp. And every time I get that, when I'm coaching people, I tell them to stop. The reason is they want to see you, yeah, teach, coach, share, educate, but they want you to be real. Yeah. They're, people are tired of the Hollywood fake facade. They want you, and that's why YouTube creates the access of me to you, one-to-one, -one, very authentically. Yep, I agree completely. So I got a question coming in here about the how often do you post? Do you yeah. regularly do it? Do you every day or the Tuesday, Thursday, Fridays? What's your recommendation for the rhythm of creating that flow for your channel? So with all the videos that I've done and experimented on, it's it's come to the point where it's like I, I would rather do one video a week to have that quality, uh, quantity, not quality, uh, quantity, not quality. And, you know, it's make sure that the story is good. So do it once, maybe twice a week. Because it's, it's work on that story. Make sure it's something that's educational and something that someone can relate to. And it's, it's, it's good. It's solid. something you feel passionate about sharing. So I would say once, twice a week. But with those shorts, I would do – I do shorts a lot. I do shorts one every other day. So I'll film that episode and then I'll cut that down into three shorts and then I'll throw those up. So those shorts will get people excited about it. And then by the time that day comes in their week where you're going to post the, the, the long form content, they've already had a taste of it and it's there and they're ready for them to consume. 
See, and I do so much live streaming that I've got the content every day going in, and I have to go back in and grab the short yeah. to drive people back to the replay. But again, the power of replays is now a very powerful tool if you learn how to leverage it through shorts. Shorts become your commercial, your teaser. And if you put the link in, driving back to the big content, you just keep the circle going around forever, don't you? It's your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> What about crafting a successful channel? YouTube's gone through a lot of iterations. They've done some big changes recently, but I'm a huge fan of some of them. Like, for example, it used to be how many subscribers, and you're always, like, beating people, begging people to subscribe. Now it's kind of like the Nielsen ratings where you want people to stay in your channel, watch longer, more views, and the count is still there, but the count's not as important. So you build your channel off of viewers now, right? Correct, yeah. And it... It's, I mean, you want to pay attention to the, the data, uh, data analytics, but it's exactly it, like, like, like you said, you, it's, it, it, it's evolving. YouTube is always evolving and changing and shifting and yeah, shorts came and now who knows what the next iteration is going to be. <laughs> and so it honestly is kind of, it, it all goes back to the experimenting to, to kind of learning what is resonating with your audience. So, this, so the success of your channel is dictated by, you know, the single individual episodes, even even just a short, can make your channel blow up. It's, I mean, I hate to always go back to shorts, but it's such a, it's such a huge thing. It's a game changer now. It, again, it really has. But when people start using it as a lead magnet tool, it really changes yeah. much. It drives. I mean, I've got a couple of mine have gone like fifteen hundred views and still counting. Yep. Now, that drives people to the channel. Once they see the channel, if they see the layout, the design, the call to action, those are all some of the things you work on, then you get them to stick around and they'll go start clicking on the longer place. And to and me, it's so important to get that lead in now. Yeah, I mean, and once you get to those longer, the long-form content, you'll start to formulate, you know, your own buckets with these things. So for an example, uh, I do some videos uh, for a real estate company and I, I – what's been resonating is contractors talking about contractors. How can contractors help the do's and don'ts, the horror stories, all that stuff. So figuring out those little buckets on, okay, here's a bucket full of horror stories, a bucket full of really positive stories. Then you have these catalogs. You have these playlists that people can go to and really understand, you know, I want to see just this. I want to see just that. So it's a very interesting thing. So I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you and I are here. I'm going to make us, look a little bit better over here, move us over on the side. So this is my YouTube channel. And this is one of the things since we're, asked, we're kind of talking about design right now a little bit too. I found out a way, and I don't think it's widely known, Chris, but most people's video channels, YouTube channels, look kind of like this. Extremely chaotic, just videos everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's no order. Correct. I've gone in and TV Guide used to be you flip it through and you see your shows Monday through Friday. They were all color coded. They were branded in TV guide. I took this idea after I learned that you could do this where all my rock to stage shows are all on one level. They've all got the same branding. Yep. This is one of my shows with the NSA. Here's my 2 PM live. So you literally are going through it like you are in TV guide and it makes it easier for finding the right content. What other tips do you have like that to help people build it out? Yep. So it's visually compelling and they don't get lost in all the chaos. Yeah. So this works perfectly for what you do because you do live. So these are literally shows. And yep. so when you're doing like episodic things that subjects kind of change throughout the week, still have your brand consistency, your brand colors, your logo, things like that on there. But make sure a lot of them will have thumbnails that are going to grab your attention. You know, so like I said, yours is your thumbnails are going to be completely different from mine because yes. I'm trying to like show you a topic on something. And so I'll have a brand colors, I'll have the logo, but the image is going to be different because it's depending on the subject. So as long as you have your brand consistency on there, they'll know that this is coming from you. And so when I first started out, we're going to go back to that in just a second again. But when we first started out, I was doing what I think you're doing. I made unique distinctive co covers. So if I was doing something kind of funny, I definitely had a funny smirk or did something. If I was doing something on branding, I made it very clear with the brand. So all my covers were different, but similar, like you're describing. And people like those. They, they, they like getting a snippet of the flavor of it through your cover, don't they? Yep, exactly. Yep. Because it, it's that hook. It's that six to eight seconds that I was talking about, but in just 
a visual form that hooks you in of like what that thumbnail, sometimes the thumbnails will catch your eye more than the title, more than anything. Cause you're like, what does that mean? And you'll yes. click on it. Yeah. Well, and I've seen people again, you're going back to the experience, um, experimenting now, but I've seen people put thumbnails out early on when they're building out their channels, which one do you think is better? And they're experimenting with the same title in different layouts to see which, which one is going to grab people. That's a tool you can use to experiment to build out your channel, right? Yep. Correctly. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I change my thumbnails every so often to test them. And it's, it's all the thing that I do. Cause it, I mean, there's not really a, a right or wrong way about this, but I'll create my thumbnail sometimes depending on the episode, either before the video, I even film it or afterwards. Usually I do it afterwards because there's something in there. Like there'll be like a mistake happens, like my light falls down or something. And I think it's really funny. So I'll take that and I'll put it up. So it really just, uh, just depends on, you know, what your subject is. Oh, and the question, what is a thumbnail? So yeah. a thumbnail is the image that is uh, on your episodes. So when you're scrolling through YouTube, just like that, those images are thumbnails. Yeah. So like right now we're streaming live. This is the thumbnail I use for this. We have done some special ones where I've broken the mold because they are so distinctive that I've done something unique like that. But you can see these are the thumbnails. And they're 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 short. They're bold. It's supposed to be eye catchy, correct? <laughs> correct. Yeah. <laughs> now and they're they're fun. And now we got another question coming in about categories. So mm -hmm. great question. So these are kind of categories, but there is a way to do this with what's called playlist. Correct. Let me go to the playlist over here, and see these are all my two PMs. That's the NSA show. This is a uh, program that I did with another company. These are my spotlights. Here's your playlist. And Chris, did you know you can make a playlist into a podcast now? That I did not know. You did not know that? That I did not know, actually. That's very interesting. So they're beginning to put podcasting into the video category now more and more. So I have taken my 2 p.m. live by one click of a button on my playlist it's now searchable as a podcast on YouTube. It just makes it, it's just making it so much easier so you can get content on there uh, to see your content out. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, playlists alone are huge because it's, it's those things. Like I said, if someone's like, oh my gosh, I forgot to watch that two o'clock live stream. I need to go check that out. And they just go to your playlist. There it is. And then they can just find it easily instead of sifting through all the episodes that you got. And, and again, this is because now that it's searchable and it's not just one. At first I thought, okay, I can select one and do it. I can take any playlist. I've got three playlists right now featured as podcasts. So people are searching for content, the word podcast, the word live stream. Those are your keywords. You start dropping those in and yeah. they'll find you faster because you're now you're not just one of the videos on YouTube. You're a podcast video show on YouTube. See, that's the thing that's great is – taking your content and dispersing it out there. So yet again, I'm going to go back to shorts because it's what it's, it's a huge thing. It's what I do a lot. Um, besides putting shorts on YouTube, I'll also throw them up on Facebook. I'll throw them on Instagram. I'll put it on TikToks. I mean, it's, you're making one set, one, just one video that disperse it over like four or five different, you know, platforms. And that's more eyes on you. And the, the podcast is such a great example of, how easy it is now to get your to get seen essentially well and one of the tricks when you do video on youtube if you really get into this <clears throat> call your channel you know best children books tv mm -hmm. and call it a tv channel people yeah. automatically think oh wow it's tv it, it's a mental branding game and they'll go well it must be good stuff if it's tv yeah <laughs> Completely agree. Yeah. I mean, episodic anything people really gravitate towards. What are some of the the landmines, the shortfalls that people should be aware of when they start building and getting into this? What would you recommend to say, pump your brakes, don't do? The biggest thing is for me is don't post something just to post something. You know, don't don't go in like, oh, next week I have to get a video out. I'll just get this out. I'll just do it. Like plan it. Cause it's going to do no one good if you're just putting something up there where you're not really into what you're saying. You're not getting the message across, you know, your lighting's bad. You got mustard on your shirt. You know, you're just getting content out there just to have it. 
Um, that's the biggest thing. And then also uh, just to experiment, have fun with it. There's no, there's no other way to really enjoy it, but to play and, 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 and kind of experiment with how you want to be seen on video. I want to go back to what we said about the first six seconds, first eight seconds. I want to dive a little bit deeper because that's become really, really important. Um, you saw my show opener. There's a 30 second little bumper that introduced this after your short opener, whatever it is, you need to let people know who you are, what you're doing, what the topic and get into the topic. I see so many people that they ramble yeah, and they like a slow cook thing. They'll slowly build up after six, eight, 10 seconds. If they don't know what you're going to talk about and who you are, they're gone. Right. Yeah. Their attention span is going to be yeah elsewhere. <laughs> and it's, you can use a question at the beginning. You can use um, the end of your video and Quentin Tarantino it and put it at the beginning and really just like make it confusing. Like the best example is a movie trailer. Those little teaser trailers, yep. you just see this really cool just action and, and explosions and you're like, I don't know what the story is, but that excited me. It's the same thing with your uh, shorts. And I've seen a couple podcast streaming TV shows, as I call them, because they're video, yeah. uh, which but that's a whole other debate we can get into. Um, but they are literally doing it, and then they come back and film separately a introduction. We had a great interview with Steve. Steve was amazing. The rich content we had. I learned something new from Steve. Check out what we did. So they're setting the energy up. Yeah. It's pre-can, and they come back at the end, the book in it with – wasn't that amazing what Steve said? Yeah. What do you think of that idea? That's great. I mean, because it also fo follows the TV show kind of format like like yours. So if we were doing something and you had another guest after me, you're exactly right. You're like, Chris did a really good job. I'm patting myself. Uh, Chris did a wonderful job. You know, check him out, blah, 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 blah. Now let's move on. Like, yeah, that's great to, to kind of bookend that story. And you can also, too, don't worry about – using any dialogue like you can also use visuals to it so yeah. uh, a good example i was filming a house uh this property that was just horrible it had the weirdest things written on the wall and the only thing it had in the opening was this creepy music a slow pan to this really eerie just uh, uh words on a wall and cut to black and then the intro music and and it's and so then you're like what does that mean and it hooked everyone in to kind of see what that episode is so the questions are coming in furiously now here, Chris. Rapid fire time a little bit. Uh, audio. YouTube is great for video and audio. I would suggest peeling off the audio and putting that as a true audio podcast. Mm -hmm. Leverage video. I know so many podcasters are doing Zoom, whatever the leveraging for video. Deleting the video and then only going audio only. Right. Why leave the audio and the video separate? Why not leverage it all, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I agree completely. Uh, uh, agree with you on that because I mean, obviously, you want to be able to hear what everyone's doing. Um, because there's multiple things you can do, and and if you have an issue with audio just in general, right? If you don't have anything, you you can use smaller uh, lavaliers from like Rode or even just a simple shotgun mic for like sixty bucks at Best Buy. So there are cheaper options to get you used to how those things work. Um, it's just so many options. <laughs> well, should every video have an intro? Uh, I believe so. But an intro in a loose form. It's not like, hi, welcome to my house. Like, use those quick little just teasers. So an intro in, in the sense of like, yeah, an opening to your video, but not like you in, uh, addressing someone. Use those analogies. Use those questions. Use the the end of a video to be your introduction. So yes, you do. Well, and I know realtors, by the way, when they do a house tour, they literally stand the door, the camera's on one side and like, welcome. Yeah. It feels like they're welcoming their home, but that, that's their introduction. Exactly. So some very simple creative things. Just get one person to hold the camera, talk to the camera, close the door, open up the door and you've got your introduction right there. Exactly. Or even explaining, you're like, hey, guys, today we're going to be visiting this awesome tree house that I found down the road. Let's check it out. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> Jan's jumping in here and she agrees the rambling drives her crazy. Yeah. <laughs> what other big factors could you share with us to help make this YouTube thing so powerful? Companies are beginning to understand that they need to leverage 
create shows for internal purposes, for external purposes. But now content creators are becoming much more media savvy and it's changing so rapidly. So what would you suggest? So one thing you got to keep in mind with YouTube is don't worry so much. Don't, don't let you be the focus of everything. If you have a business, utilize all those other characters within your business. So if you have a really, really good graphic designer, do something with that graphic designer. If you, if you're in a restaurant and you have this great sous chef that can do the, the, this marble cake, you know, let them talk about how they do this marble cake. You have many different characters. Yes, you should be the main character of your story, but you have all these supporting characters that really should all be in the foreground of your videos from time to time. It keeps it fresh and it keeps it so it's not like this stagnant thing all the time. Well, and that's where you can slide a testimonial in. Yeah. Again, you pre-recorded, slide it in. It adds value, richness of another voice, another setting. Uh, you can do team training videos, of course, a way to do that. And share these out to other platforms. It's not just stuck on YouTube. Here's the joy of this. Share your videos on the other platforms. Drive it as a lead magnet, always back to your main area. Yep, correct. What is maybe the biggest landmine right, right now when it comes to YouTube? What, what, what's that biggest thing that you say it's taken to a time, energy, or it's going to hurt your brand on YouTube? I mean, one of the things is, is, I don't want to say copying others, but like the lack of originality of finding something that you like and instead of turning it into something that's, you know, fits your brand, fits your personality, you just copy it. I've seen a lot of videos that are like that. A lot of uh, creators and even some businesses will do that. And it's, it's, I mean, it, it'll, it's good content, but it's not true to who you are as the business or the, or the, uh, the creator. So it's, it's, it's that originality of, of, of trying to figure out what's going to work for you. That's going to get your message across in your own words, in your own, in your own way, your own manner. I'm sure someone's thinking, I can't afford the technology. Yeah. Do you, do you, do you, do you want to myth, but that one up for me, please? <laughs> so I, when I started out, this is what I used. I had a, I didn't even have a tripod. I had it set up on books and I just recorded myself. That's all I did for like two years until I could afford, you know, to get, to get things. But you really don't need crazy DSLR cameras. You, you don't need all this stuff. You just really need simple phone and a good message to, to, to drive it across. And you'll, you'll get the results that you need. You just got to be consistent. Consistency is, the, is the, the name of the game when it comes to YouTube. This has been great, Chris. I really appreciate it. I do want to drive people back to your site as well. You can go to his YouTube channel right there, get the phone out, hit the QR code. And what are they going to find there, Chris? So I have a splattering of, of different topics on how to, the importance of B-roll, music. I have demo, demo reels in there for my business. I have a, just a bunch of different playlists that you can learn about how to create content, how to sustain content, and the importance of just the content creation process as a whole. Chris Chavez, great to have you here today. What's kind of the biggest final way? Land the plane really well for us. What's the biggest thing you're going to tell us about YouTube branding marketing? Just do it. <laughs> to be completely honest, like if you have an, uh, if you think you want to try it, but you don't know what you want to do, dive in. Just completely dive in and immerse yourself in filming. Feel uncomfortable how to speak, how the structure of your videos are going to be. Just, just do it. It's the only way to really dive in. You you will get comfortable, but that consistency and doing it and having fun with it is going to help push you to something that's going to make you uncomfortable. And that's where you need to be specifically with YouTube. <laughs> Where's the best way to find you besides YouTube? Yeah. So uh, I'm on every single social media, Chavis Creative Company, uh, TikTok, you name it. Um, and you can also check out my website at uh, chaviscreative.co. Perfect. Chris Chavez, thanks for being with us here tonight. Again, so much great information, and YouTube is a game changer. Um, Shorts has become a game changer. These are things that are always morphing and changing, and it's only going to keep evolving. Um, as if, if you've been following Rock to Stage Media very long, Rock to Stage Show, you realize this is an evolving thing that it's fun to keep up with. It's challenging to keep up with some as well, but you can now unlock and do media at home. You don't need NBC, ABC. You don't need to pay a big production company. You can build your own media empire by learning how to leverage it. And the best thing about YouTube is 
We didn't even mention it. It's free. It's a free media platform for you to learn how to drive video and touch your customers, touch your friends, family, coworkers, and reach out to the world. It's the global platform. Hey, if you have any questions, as always, you can always contact me, rich at richbontrigger.net. That's rich at richbontrigger.net. Rock the Stage Media is always here to help you out. And you do want to go check out the newly improved rockthestagemedia.com website. Major upgrades, major changes about all the things we've got going on. And we'd love to have you check it out and even join so you get your newsletter, get the blog, get other bonuses that you can only get by joining us there. And that's going to do it for now on the Trigger Rich Bond Trigger. We'll be back next week again, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We go live for How to Rock the Stage, helping you shine on camera, shine on stage, and elevating you and your brand authority. We'll see you next week.